and welcome once again to Hola America TV and WQPT, your PBS station. Thank you for joining us once again as we explore the sights and sounds of the Hispanic community here in the Midwest. My name is Natalie Zeroni. I'm a reporter for CBS 4 News here in the Quad Cities and also your host. We have a great show for you today. Hola America TV had an exclusive interview with Lieutenant Governor candidate Evelyn Sanguinetti. She's the running partner for Bruce Rauner, and if elected, she would become the first Latina to hold the Lieutenant Governor title in the state of Illinois. A preview video of that interview that we posted last week on our YouTube page, Hola America TV, was the subject of an article by the Chicago Sun-Times website, helping that video reach over 450 views in only 24 hours. Today we bring you more of that interview. We also have an interview with two-time gold medalist at the Paralympic Games, Andy Yoey, who will be speaking tomorrow night at a think tank session at Rivermont Collegiate in Bettendorf, Iowa, which happens to be his hometown. We'll also bring you the news briefs and the Que Pasa community calendar that will cover some of the current events of our community. We invite you to join the conversation on our Facebook page, Hola America News, or on Twitter. There you'll find more pictures, extended interviews, and more exclusive material. And please visit our remodeled website with a fresh new look. Now it's updated three times a week, so you can keep up with what's happening in our community in Iowa and Illinois. Let's kick off the show with our exclusive interview with Evelyn Sanguinetti. Evelyn Sanguinetti is the Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor for the state of Illinois. Last week, she was in the Quad Cities for a visit of Hero Street Park and Monument and for an exclusive interview with Hola America. Evelyn is the living embodiment of the American dream. A first-generation American, she was born in Florida to immigrant parents. Her father from Ecuador and her mother entered the country as a Cuban refugee. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm originally born and raised in Miami, Florida. My mom is from Fidel Castro's Cuba and my father is from Ecuador, one of the poorest countries in the world. Um, I found opportunity through education in Florida and I was able to go to college through a educational opportunities at a university on a scholarship. I later went to the John Marshall Law School uh, where I still enjoy teaching classes at today. I served under former Illinois Attorney General Jim Ryan and um, later I decided to give politics a try. I ran for the Wheaton City Council, a place where my children chose to have and raise our kids today. It wasn't until later that I met Bruce Rauner at a Republican National Hispanic Assembly event and I loved his message. So I was very willing to sign on when he asked me to. If elected, she would be the first Latina to hold the office of Lieutenant Governor in the history of Illinois. We asked her what that role meant. Well, that's that's an incredible question, and you'll probably get a trillion answers only because uh, it depends on the governor. It's up to the governor to give us a role. And so with Bruce Rauner, we're going to work as a team. I will be in his partner, and wherever he's not, I will be able to make decisions in his stead. Uh, and it's a, it's a great deal for the taxpayer because we'll both be working uh, hand in hand with one another. One of the platforms for the Rauner and Sanguinetti ticket is government reform. And part of that, their push for term limits with the idea that no governor should be allowed to serve more than eight years and the legislator should be term limited as well. Sanguinetti is committed to this promise. Wow. Well, when I started in politics, I certainly didn't think I'd um, go into that realm. I've enjoyed serving on the Wheaton City Council, where I serve today. Uh, certainly, I do not want a career in the Wheaton City Council. After having served one term, I'm out of that. And hopefully, when I become your lieutenant governor, I'll be able to serve two terms and be out of that, and so on. Uh, maybe one day I may even be your governor or be something else or go back to practicing law and teaching law. Uh, but I do believe in term limits firmly, and I will term limit myself from the office of Lieutenant Governor. Well, Illinois should be a friendly state to immigrants, and I tell you this only because my mother's from Fidel Castro's Cuba, and my father is from Ecuador. Uh, we are a state of immigrants, and so because of that, of course, Illinois should be an immigrant-friendly state, and will continue to be under the Browner and San Guanetti administration. And after the show, check out more clips from this interview on our YouTube channel, Hola America TV. Up next, we bring you our coverage of this year's 25th annual Komen Quad Cities Race for the Cure, which took place last Saturday, June 14th, outside the iWireless Center. More than 6,000 people ran or walked the 5K and the 1.2 mile race, including over 500 breast cancer survivors. Here are the images.
The 25th annual Coleman Quad Cities Race for the Cure took place last Saturday, June 14, 2014, outside the iWireless Center. More than 6,000 people ran or walked the 5K and the 1.2-mile race. More than $200,000 was raised. Proceeds of this event will go toward the fight against breast cancer. Since the race started in 1990, more than $5.7 million has been raised. Up to 75% of the funds stay in an eight-county area of Illinois and Iowa to provide mammograms and other breast health services for underserved and underinsured women, with the rest going to Susan G. Komen for the cure for breast cancer research, according to their press release. Nearly 6,500 people had registered to run or walk, including more than 500 breast cancer survivors. Aside from skin cancer, breast cancer is the most common cancer among women in the U.S. It is the most common cancer found among every racial and ethnic group. Race is not a risk factor for breast cancer, but the rates of getting and dying from breast cancer differ among ethnic groups. The lifetime probability of dying from cancer is 1 in 6 for Hispanic women. Cancer is the leading cause of death among Hispanics. Screening and good treatment for breast cancer can lower your risk of dying. Mammograms can find breast cancer early when survival is highest. Talk with your doctor about which screening tests are right for you. For more information, visit www.coman.org or call Susan G. Coman's Breast Care Helpline at 1-877-GO-COMAN. That is 1-877-465-6636. For more pictures of this event, we invite you to follow us with our Facebook pages, Hola America News and Hola America Sports, and join the conversation on Twitter, at HATV with Natalie. Let us know what you think about our program. And don't forget to visit our newly remodeled website at www.holamericanews.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter for updates of what's going on every week in the Hispanic community of Iowa and Illinois. There you'll find more pictures, extended interviews, and more exclusive material. And we're now on Instagram, where you'll see exclusive pictures from our guests and some behind the scenes pictures. And if you missed any of our previous shows, you can catch them on our YouTube channel, Hola America TV. Now let's check out the news briefs that cover some of the current events in our community from both Iowa and Illinois. This past week, young women had the opportunity to explore career possibilities in criminal justice or law enforcement as they participated in hands-on activities in Crime Time STEM Camp for Girls. The Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Camp, otherwise known as STEM, took place at Black Hawk College on June 11th through the 13th. Hi, my name is Jen Holdorf, and I work at Black Hawk College as the coordinator for Crime Time, which is our STEM camp for girls. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, which are all non-traditional careers for women, and they're all high-wage, high-growth careers that we want to introduce the girls to. So this year we have 20 girls who attended, we had 22 sign up, and they are learning about crime scene investigation. We had a forensic uh, crime scene tech come and do some fake crime scenes with us. They got to learn about fingerprinting, DNA through electrophoresis and banding. They got to see what a canine police officer does and how the dog sniffs out drugs and learn a little bit about that uh, career. And then they also got to learn a little self-defense, which is important for any woman to know, but is also something that you have to keep in mind when you're alone on a crime scene. So today at the Putnam Museum is our field trip, and we're, they're kind of applying all the knowledge that they learned and getting to see the CSI experience, which is based on the CSI show on CBS. And with Gil Grissom, they presented all their evidence that they collected through the tour of the exhibit. So this is a yearly camp that we've done typically every summer. This summer we had a little bit of a challenge because of the weather and schools getting out later. So we kind of started brainstorming of what could we do different. We don't know what the future holds. It could continue to be a summer camp or we could do something different. A lot of the girls who are here, they gave us the feedback of maybe we should do it over winter break or maybe we should do it on a weekend and maybe an overnighter, which comes up every year. But So I don't know what the future will hold next year, but we'll have some sort of event for girls to get them interested in STEM careers. So if they want to get on our mailing list would be the best way is to email me at h-o-l-l-d-o-r-f-j at bhc.edu or call me at 796-5133. 
Quad Cities Interfaith organized a prayer vigil for immigration reform on Thursday, June 19th in front of Congressman Dave Loebsack's office in Davenport, Iowa. Clergy leaders and attendees prayed and called attention to the humanitarian crisis unfolding at our U.S. border due to the failure of Congress to enact comprehensive reform. So for several years, Quad Cities Interfaith and other community groups all across the nation have been calling on our congressional leaders to pass and enact humane, comprehensive immigration reform. And what we have uh, classically called an impasse now, nobody seems to want to act. This is an election year and we have people in Congress, just a handful, who are holding up reform. So uh, the final straw for us was seeing these really horrific pictures of children who are being detained at the border, unaccompanied minors who are living in really abhorrent uh, con conditions. Uh, our government is holding them. Uh, it remains to be seen whether they're um, being taken care of the way they should. It doesn't look good. Uh, the failure to act is a direct result of, uh, is resulting in these children suffering and we, we've, we're tired of it. And as the faith community, we're speaking out to say enough is enough, show some leadership and vote on immigration reform. We're part of a coalition that's acting all over the country today, including in Washington, D.C. Uh, there's an action on Speaker Boehner's office today. He won't even bring it to a vote. You know, this isn't partisan. This is do your job. There are uh, Congress people who are elected to do a job and they're not doing it. And that's what we're asking people to do. It's a handful of people holding it up, bring it to a vote. Quad Cities Interfaith is a nonprofit, nonpartisan, faith-based coalition of 23 congregations and community groups that come together to build communities and empowers ordinary people to effectively participate in the political, environmental, social, and economic decisions affecting their lives. And on the other side of the river, we say goodbye to the students of the Scholarships for Education and Economic Development SEED program at Scott Community College as they prepare to go back to their countries in Mexico and South America. The SEED program is a cooperative effort between uh, the United States government and Georgetown University and Scott Community College is proud to be a partner in that to bring the most economically challenged but the greatest potential students from Central America and the Caribbean to the U.S. for two years to learn a study uh, field and skills and abilities that will allow them to return home and get gainful employment and make a difference. Surprisingly, the comment that students always make about something that really impressed them that they will never forget is how the people here in Iowa and the Quad Cities volunteer. And our students have volunteered alongside um, many people here in the Quad Cities for all kinds of special events. We've done the Bix, we've done the Festival of Trees, we've served food at the Salvation Army, we've helped with uh, Hispanic events in the community, and all kinds of events on the college campus as well. Uh, currently, we uh, have seven countries that participate in the program. We have in the Caribbean, we have Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And then we have Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Actually, the current uh, contract that USAID has with Georgetown University is going to expire in December of 2015. And that has been for the last five years, a uh, two-year uh, program of, of disadvantaged but uh, really remarkable young people. Uh, and so, uh, our, our program, because we were on a, a two-year cohort from 2012 to 2014, this is our last group of two-year students. And then um, we, it remains to be seen what will happen with the future of this program. Uh, we believe at Eastern Iowa that it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for our students uh, that maybe have never left Iowa to sit side by side with these young people in classes and study with them and uh, talk about the instructor and volunteer with them and just uh, enjoy leadership and other opportunities throughout the campus. So the future remains to be seen as to, as to what will happen. Hopefully USAID will redesign something perhaps, something perhaps shorter than two years in length, but something that will still target this population, 18 to 24 year olds, with uh, severe limited economic resources, but with tremendous potential to make a difference and be a positive agent of change. Latin Persuasion is a family-friendly car club that was established in 1994 by Mike Sanchez and Flavio Rosas. This car club is well known in the community and has been featured in Lowrider Magazine, Chicago Tribune, and HBO. 
Last Saturday, June 21st, Latin Persuasion Car Club celebrated their 20-year anniversary at Fezzerberry Park in Davenport, Iowa with a car show, bouncy house, and piñatas for kids, DJ, and award ceremony. We invite you to join the conversation and follow us on our Facebook pages, Hola America News and Hola America Sports, or on Twitter at HATV with Natalie. Let us know what you think about our program. And if you want to see more extended interviews, please visit our YouTube channel, Hola America TV. Next, we have our exclusive interview with Andy Yoey, a Bettendorf native and two-time gold medalist at the Paralympic Games, who will be speaking tomorrow night at a think tank session at Rivermont Collegiate. And after the show, check out more clips from this interview on our YouTube channel, Hola America TV. Uh, my name is Andy Yoey, and I am the captain of the U.S. Paralympic sled hockey team. Always a hockey fanatic, Andy Yohi of Bettendorf, Iowa, was a roller hockey player for the Bettendorf Young Guns before losing both legs in an accident in 1994. But he did not allow the accident to prevent him from continuing his athletic career. Andy became an ice sled hockey player and went on to serve as captain of the U.S. Paralympic sled hockey team that won the gold medal at the 2010 Paralympic Winter Games in Vancouver, Canada and the 2014 Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi, Russia. Uh, I got involved in sled hockey in 2003. Uh, I went to a, uh, played wheelchair basketball for six years and I went to a national final four and after that, I just really wanted to explore some other disabled sports. Um, so I heard that there was a, a sled hockey program here in the Quad Cities. So I went down and, and tried it out and immediately fell in love with it. Uh, I played hockey when I was younger, before my injury. And so I, I naturally just really in, enjoyed getting back on the ice. Andy manages a prosthetic and orthotic facility and currently resides in Bettendorf, Iowa with Katie, their three-year-old daughter, Abby, and newborn son, Levi. He is a 2009 graduate of Ashford University with a degree in business administration. I, I work at Miller Meyer Lemon Brace, uh, a local prosthetic and orthotic company here in town. Uh, we manufacture artificial limbs and braces for uh, the disabled population here in the Quad Cities. And uh, I, my job currently is an is office manager of the, of the business and I used to actually manufacture the artificial limbs and braces, then I did billing for a while. And uh, now I've come back and, and gotten my degree so, and, and moved on. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how, what I do here. Back in 1994, Andy was only 16 years old when he lost both of his legs. After the accident, he realized that in order to get any part of his life back, he needed to keep a positive attitude. Uh, my accident, uh, I, I was run over by a train in 1994, and uh, I was uh, playing around down, down by the train tracks in Bettendorf, here locally and uh, there was a train train cruising by and I thought I was gonna go show my friends how it was done and and go jump a train and ride it for a while and uh, ran up alongside the train and uh, it was going a little too fast I grabbed a hold of the ladder tried to jump on the train and um, it I it jerked me off my feet so I instinctively just let go and uh, the train sucked me under and spit me right back out and um, I immediately realized that uh, my right leg was completely uh, severed. It was about 20 feet away from me down the tracks and my left leg was just barely holding on uh, by my pants. So um, really a, a, a rough, uh, rough deal. I was conscious throughout the entire experience. I was airlifted to Iowa City and then spent a month there um, just trying to get me back to, to where I could come back home. So um, I was 16 years old when that happened. Yeah, well, I, I obviously, uh, the reason I, I wanted to get back into it and, and really take a positive spin is I thought that was the only way that I was going to be able to regain any, any part of my life. Uh, I was very active, and I wanted to remain active, and I, I sure didn't want to let this um, accident slow me down. And I, I knew I had, um, you know, I was very young, and I, I had a lot of years left of my life to live, and, and I, I, I wanted to live them as fully as I could. Uh, I just really had a great appreciation for still being alive uh, at the time, and, and really just wanted to get out in the world and, and just experience life. I, I really enjoy golf. Uh, I'm a big fan of golf, and I, I like to hand cycle. I really like the bike trail here in the Quad Cities. They've got so many beautiful trails here in the Quad Cities. I love being out there. I love to spend time with my family and friends, and um, I like to uh, like boating on the Mississippi, and um, those are, those are kind of my with things I do to get away. Andy has an indomitable spirit as well as a vital message to share with the public.
He will give a presentation called Creating Positive Outcomes at a Think Tank session to be held 6 to 8 p.m. June 26 at Rivermont Collegiate, 1821 Sunset Drive, Bettendorf, Iowa. Uh, Todd um, from Results Marketing contacted me and said that they're uh, they're doing presentations here locally in the Quad Cities that kind of resemble the TED Talks, and uh, he asked me to do a presentation. and I've, I've been doing this presentation for a while now about creating positive outcomes in your life, and um, really the the presentation is just kind of a. Uh, uh, my own experiences as to how I, I feel like I've kind of created positive outcomes after, you know, being in such a, a bad accident. And uh, really, I, I think just having a positive attitude is really one of the first things uh, that uh, that's really the most important thing in, uh, in creating positive outcomes. Um, every event you have in your life, every day, you have options um, that you can um, take a, a, a situation and, and turn it into a negative or you can turn it into a positive. And, and that's totally up to you as a person at, at, as to how you take that. So um, that's that's really the first step is, is just deciding that what whatever situations you have in your life, you're going to take the high road and you're going to you're going to have a, a positive come out with a positive experience rather than only talk about the bad things that happen during your day or or something like that. So that that's kind of the first step. Um, the fir the second one is uh, is really just about um, educating yourself and adapting to the situation. Um, and then after that, it's really just hard work. Um, there isn't really any substitute for hard work. And I think anybody that's had any real success in the world can tell you that um, that hard work is is really where it starts. No, come check out the event uh, on on June 26th at uh, Rivermont Collegiate. We invite you to join the conversation and follow us on our Facebook page, Hola America News, or on Twitter. Let us know what you think about these interesting subjects. Next up is the Que Pasa Calendar, a community calendar where you'll find the latest cultural events for you and your family to enjoy this week. And if your organization would like us to feature their event on our Que Pasa Calendar, please contact us through Facebook at Hola America News. On Thursday, July 3rd, 2014, don't miss the best fireworks display in the Quad Cities shot over the mighty Mississippi featuring live performances, fun activities, food, drinks, and more. This family-friendly event celebrating America's birthday offers plenty of entertainment on both sides of the mighty Mississippi. This year's event will be held at Schwebert Riverfront Park and Modern Woodman Park. Events begin at 6 p.m. and fireworks at 9.30 p.m. The following morning, come out and participate in the 31st annual Genesis Firecracker Run in downtown East Moline. Events start at 7.30 a.m. Kids races, the National Bank Mile, 5K Run Walk, 10K Run, 10K Relay, Hospital Bed Races, Guns and Hoses Challenge, Pancake Breakfast, Post Race Party, and Costume Contest. After the races, the annual AMVETS 4th of July Parade in East Moline will begin at 1 p.m. at 3rd Street and 15th Avenue. Proceed down 15th Avenue and end at 13th Street. This year's theme is Celebrate Freedom. Come on out and enjoy the festivities. It's time to say goodbye for tonight, but we would love to hear from you. So don't forget to connect with us through our Facebook page, Hola America News, or on Twitter, at HATV with Natalie. And we are now on Instagram, where you will see exclusive pictures from our guests and some behind the scenes pictures as well. And if you missed any of our previous shows, you can catch them on our YouTube channel, Hola America TV. And don't forget to tune in in September, when we will continue our journey of the sights and sounds of the Hispanic community here in the Midwest. Muchas gracias y buenas noches.